Hi everyone, Christina Werner here. Welcome to another video at my YouTube channel. In today's video, I'm going to be using these two new stamp sets from Simon Says Stamp. First is Bold Leaves, and the second stamp set is called Circle Sayings. And it actually has a circle die that you can buy separately, or if you've got some circle dies in your stash, probably one of them will work. But just a circle will cut out all of these different sayings. These are both designs that I contributed to the Simon Says Stamp Stamp Timber release. So when I first designed that Bold Leaves Cling Stamp, the only thing I think in the back of my mind was, I need to stamp this on a watercolor background. So here we are today. I'm using four colors of Distress Ink Reinkers. I've got Ripe Persimmon, Villainous Potion, Black Soot, and Twisted Citron. I've also taped down some white watercolor paper to a board so that as I paint this very, very wet background, it's going to stay flat. The paper I'm using today is Fabriano. Um, let's see, Fabriano Artistico Extra White. And I'm just putting these paints down onto my palette here and I'll be picking them up with a brush. The first thing I'm doing on this background is spraying it down with water. So we're going to do a wet on wet technique, meaning I'm bringing in wet paint onto a wet surface. Starting out with ripe persimmon, and I'm just going to put this in a few different or a couple different areas on this background, and then I'll start dropping in the other colors. So traditionally in watercolor, I don't know that I would put orange and purple right next to it and next to green and things like that, but I thought, you know, these are such quintessential Halloween colors. I had to try it. I couldn't get it out of my head. I just had to try it. So turns out they actually look really great. They do look very kind of spooky and ominous, very fall-esque, but really beautiful in the end. So I wanted to show you all this painting process in real time. So I'm not gonna cut away your speed up or anything. I really want to show you how I do this. So I'm dropping the colors into separate areas. I'm holding my board very flat at this point. And then I added a bunch of water with my spray bottle. Then I'll start tipping my board and coaxing that paint to start moving. And I think this looks so cool. I wish it could dry like this, but it'll actually dry quite softened compared to these harsh edges. But I'm just tipping my board back and forth and you know, like, oh, this color's creeping too much, so I'll tip it away and, and moving things around. I've also got my paper towel in my right hand so I can sop up any paint that moves around. This is a very, very wet background. There's a lot of ink on here. So um, things really tend to wanna to move around. When you're ready to just let the colors be and not them let them move too much further, go ahead and set your board down. That'll stop any big movements. And then when it comes to the drying process, just use a heat tool or let it dry on its own. I find that using a heat tool actually keeps the colors where I want them a little bit more. When you're air drying, it just allows them to keep spreading. So if you really want something unexpected, let it air dry. But if you want to have a tiny bit more control over it, go ahead and use a heat tool or a hair dryer to speed up the drying process. So here's my first background. I loved it so much, I wanted to try again. So I've taped down a new piece of paper and this time we're going wet on dry. So I've got wet paint on dry paper. And I wanted to see if it was any easier to control where the paint goes if I did it this way. Essentially, I'm using a little bit less water than I did on the previous background. So I started with ripe persimmon, brought in some twisted citron. And on this one, I'm trying to not overlap and touch each color to the color next to it as much. I wanted to see what would happen if I let them have some white space in between. Now with so much paint on my paper, having these white spaces in between really doesn't you know, have much of a difference, especially once I've got all my ink on here or all my paint and I'm going to uh, you know, spritz it with water to get things moving. So here I am add adding some water there is a lot of water on there and I'm tipping my board. I'm gonna to start to get these colors moving. Now, I was very aware of this like dark purple spot in that corner. I didn't want it to become overwhelming, but I also didn't want um, to get rid of all the purple altogether. So I'm just kind of 
manipulating this. I'm going to tip it back and forth, get those colors to spread. And um, I really, I really enjoyed how this one turned out. Now I've got this dry spot over there on the right. So I'm going to take my spray bottle, my little distress sprayer, and I'm actually going to just spritz directly on top of that spot just to give a little more water so that the paint can run into it. I've got another dry spot over on the left in that purple area, kind of where the purple and orange transition. So I'm going to do that same, that exact same thing with that area. And I'm just sopping up some paint and then I'll spritz that. And that just helps the paint fill in those areas. So I've got it almost to where I want it, but it wasn't quite what I was envisioning. I, I thought, you know what, there's just that big green corner. I wasn't quite sure I want what I wanted to do with it. So I thought, you know what, let's tip it one more time and kind of add a diagonal and get these colors to spread. And this looked so cool. I wish I could have dried it so it looked exactly like this because I thought it looked really kind of spooky, a little bit ominous. And I was really going for just Halloween vibes for these backgrounds at this point. So I wanted to have something a little bit different. So I'm holding it at a diagonal, I'm letting it, but when I put it down on my work surface, you notice that all those streaks just start to soften. So I picked it back up and I dried it, holding it at a diagonal, just trying to preserve all of those streaks coming down across the background. And for the most part, as I dried it, those stayed. So I was very happy with how this turned out. Both of these backgrounds, really unexpected, love them. So once everything was completely dry, I removed the tape and took my background off of the board. So now we're going to get into the stamping and I'm removing the foam pad inside my Misty so that I can use that big cling stamp. When you're going to use a cling stamp, you have to remove that foam pad in your stamp positioner. Once again, this stamp is called Bold Leaves and I'm going to use a Misty sticky mat to place my watercolor background right in the center of my stamping platform so that I can stamp edge to edge as much as possible. I will be cutting these down, but I wasn't sure what sections I would be using at this point. So I just wanted to maximize the amount of this background that would be utilized. So I'm positioning that, pick that up with the door of my Misty, and then I'm going to do some prep on the watercolor paper. I've got an anti-static powder tool. This is the cotton tail from Rabbit Hole Designs. And I'm just brushing that powder over that area just to make sure it's completely dry and prepared for embossing. I'm using Versamark ink on my cling stamp. And then I'm going to close the door of my Misty and I'm going to press this stamp down onto my watercolor paper. And I wanna make sure that I get every single corner and area of the stamp. So I decided to use my Stampin' Bug glider. It's just a stamp pr uh, pressing tool that helps to get a really even impression. So I'll uh, press that down with my fingers as well. And then when I lift this up, I've got my background right there. So to remove it from the sticky mat, I bend the sticky mat, not the, pa the paper, I'll bend the sticky mat back and then it, my watercolor paper pops off. My sticky mat isn't quite as sticky as it once was. In fact, it's at the perfect amount of stickiness right now. So I'm really loving it. This is gilded embossing powder from Brutus Monroe. And I just sprinkled that on over the entire background and then tapped off the excess. I used my heat tool to heat set the powder until it was melted and you'll know it's melted when the color changes. So here is my background with the leaves on top. I think it takes it from kind of spooky to more elegant. I was really surprised at the difference in tone just by stamping that on top. All right, so here's my second background. I'm going through the same exact steps, stamping that background, applying the gold embossing powder, shaking off the excess, and then heat setting it with a heat tool. So now I'm going to uh, prepare my backgrounds for my cards. I've got the A2 layer dies from Waffle Flower, and I've also brought over the A7 layer dies. I thought I would do two cards, each a different size. For the A7 card or the five by seven card, I'm going to have it have kind of a mat around the outside edge. So it's a little bit smaller than the card itself. So I used a smaller die for that. I ran that through my die cutting machine. 
And then for the A2 card, I decided to just use the full A2 size. So I'm using the largest die in that set just to cut that out. Now, when it comes to the circles for my greetings, I thought it'd be fun to have one of the cards have the circle cut out. And at first I used the circle die that comes goes with that stamp set, but then I decided I wanted a little bit bigger. And so I used a circle from my nested circles die set from Simon. What this is gonna do is gonna give me a larger circle window that I can then put that other circle die cut in the center of. That'll make more sense here in a minute. So I've stamped my two greetings from the circle saying stamp set in Versamark ink, and I've also applied that same gold embossing powder and heat set with a heat tool until everything was melted and smooth. I then used that circle die that coordinates with the stamp set to cut out each one of these greetings. And I love that even though the greetings are different, this circle die will cut every single one of them. And like I said before, if you've got a set of circle dies in your stash, most likely you have a circle die that will match. So I put some foam adhesive on the back of the five by seven piece and put it onto a five by seven card base. I put some foam adhesive on the back of my grating and then I placed that directly on top of my background. I centered, kind of moved it around a little bit. I didn't press it down firmly until I had it in the exact spot where I wanted it. For the second card, I added a bunch of foam adhesive all around that window frame. I wanted to make sure nothing was going to be sagging in the middle. And then I put it directly onto my A2 card front and then put my greeting in the center. And that just gives it a little bit of a different look. To finish off these cards, I thought it needed a little bit of sparkle. So I brought in some gold and copper sequins. The gold are the big and small size, and then I only had the small size for copper. So that's what I used. I used a Marvy jewel picker to pick them up and then some Gina K Designs glue to glue them to my cards. So those are the two cards for today. I hope you guys enjoyed. I love these dramatic distress reinker. Uh, background. I just can't get enough of them. They make me so happy when I do cards like this. Thanks so much for watching today. If you'd like to pick up any of the supplies that I use on these cards, please check out the supplies list in the video description below. And thanks so much for watching. I will catch you guys in another video very soon.